horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. When the early pioneers settled in the western United States, they kept many of their eastern customs, but they were unable to maintain law and order in the new territory. Outlaws preyed on the honest settlers. Cattle was stolen, banks were looted, and no man's property was safe. That was when the masked rider of the plains first rode in the cause of justice. No man did more in the fight against crime and criminals, and the memory of his deeds will remain as long as the memory of the early west itself. Now return with us once more to those thrilling days of yesteryear. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for Wildville! Someone's waiting on the trail ahead! Hurry on, Silver! The town of Wellsville was founded by Zeb Wells, an Easterner. Its citizens were old neighbors and friends of Zeb from the East, and it was Zeb's money that had made it possible for them to settle in the new country. Zeb refused either to follow the customs or to be friendly with the people of the West. And the other inhabitants of Wellsville, because of their debt to him, were forced to obey his wishes. As the first scene of our drama opens, we see Nate Porter, the marshal, hailing two riders who've just entered town. Hold on there. Come on, Fellas, staying in town for a while, you're going right on through. Reckon we'll stay a while, won't we, Money? Reckon we will, Doc. What's it to you, Marshal? Well, if you're saying, you'll have to hand over them shooting irons you're wearing. Eh? Huh? What's that? You're loco. Them's the rules, and I'm here to enforce them. I never heard of such a thing afore. Is that some more of them darn fool notions of Zeb Wells? If Zeb give me my orders. You fellas strangers here? Yeah. And how come you'd know about Zeb? Shucks, everyone around these parts has heard about the crazy things he does. Is it a fact old Zeb won't let none of the girls in this town keep company with anybody that ain't from the East? It sure is. And he won't let nobody but Easterners stay in town unless they're on business? Well, not that exactly. There ain't no way to stop strangers from coming here. They just ain't made welcome, that's all. You don't talk like no Easterner. I ain't. But Zeb had to have a fellow that's handy with a gun for town marshal, so he hired me. This is sure the dernest setup I ever seen. Give me your shooting irons. You can have them back when you're ready to move on. All right. Here's mine. They'll be in my office when you want them. And here's mine. Mm-hmm. Come on, Monty. Let's get going. Yeah. Say, Marshal, there's two more fellas coming. Them fellas on two big white horses. You're taking their guns, too? I sure am. There ain't nobody comes to this town without handing over his gun belt. Come on. Get, get up there. Get up there. Get up there. Come on. Get up there. Come on. Get up there. Come on. Get up there. I don't know whether I should have let them fellows stop in town at all. They're sure a pair of tough-looking hombres. 
Hey, you fellas. Oh, 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 How do you fellows savvy what I stopped you for? We heard it was the rule here. Well, it ain't none of my doings, but I reckon Zeb savvies what he wants. He seems to have definite opinions about everything. He has that. Especially about Westerners. Chuck, Zeb ain't a bad feller, but he's just come out this way, and he's still got the notion there ain't no Westerner was ever any good. I see. Come on, Tuller. Uh, Your guns will be in my office, stranger. Very well. Come on, Tuller. Get on point, Tuller. Where are those two men gone who were talking to the marshal just before we rode up, Kimosabe? Them stopped by a livery barn. They looked to me like Dolph Layton and Monty Megan. Huh? When we saw Bolivar Bates and Hacksaw Hastings, they told us Dolph and Monty were riding this way. Them two fellas, outlaws. Dolph and Monty are two of the worst outlaws in this section. What them do here? That's what I want to find out. How you find out? First, I want to have a talk with Zeb Wells. Him plenty strange, fellow. I've heard a lot about him lately. Uh -huh. And from what I've heard, I'm afraid he's heading for trouble. Why you think that? He's prejudiced against everything Western. <laughs> That's right. For instance, he won't allow his people to carry guns. That bad. Zeb insists that only bullies and outlaws need guns. He isn't aware that if outlaws carry guns, honest people must do the same to protect themselves. Uh -huh. Wellsville has no bank. People here take the money to Zeb and he keeps it in his safe. Maybe outlaw know that. That would be a temptation to any outlaw. Zeb sometimes has thousands of dollars in his safe, from what I've been told. Not keep plenty cash. That's why I wanted to come here when I learned that Dolphin Monty would be in town. I may plan to take advantage of Zeb's ignorance of Western ways. Maybe that's right. Tonto, I want you to follow Dolph and Monty. Uh, Tonto, do that. Try to hear everything they say. Uh -huh. And in the meantime, I'll look over the town before calling on Zeb. Uh, Tonto, leave you now. See you later. Right. Come, fight, Come on, Silver. <laughs> Young Cliff Dolan had been born in the West and now was the owner of a small but prosperous ranch not many miles distant from Wellsville. We see him as he enters the general store run by Zeb Wells in town. Howdy, Rita. Cliff, what are you doing here? I come to see you, Paul. Oh, no. I told you I was. And I ain't afraid of him even if he is Leb Wells. Oh, Cliff, if he should find out I've been seeing you. That's just what I figure on telling him. But you can't... Well, where is he? He just stepped back in the storeroom. Please leave before he comes. Now, honey, you can't do that. We might just as well settle things once and for all. You can't talk to Father. I aim to tell him you and me plan on getting hit. He'll be furious. Maybe he will, and maybe he won't. But I don't hanker to keep on sneaking behind his back. He's going to find out right now how things stand. Oh, Cliff, wait. Please wait. But, Rita, there ain't no sense in it. You don't know. He may change his mind about things after a while, and... You know I'll always wait for you. Sure, I savvy you love me, honey. Just the same way I'm crazy about you. But it ain't fair to any of us to let things go on the way they've been. I, I think I hear Father coming. Well, that's just fine. Go. Please go. If he gets into one of his terrible tempers... Rita! Yes, Father? Who is this young man you're talking to? Customer? Why, uh, he... I ain't I... no customer, Mr. Wells. Yes, I come to tell you I aim to marry your girl. What's that? And Rita wants to marry me, too. Rita, this true? I... Yes, it is. Get out of here, young man. Now, look here, Mr. Wells. That ain't no way to act. There ain't nothing you could have against me. I said get out. Not till I've said all I come to say. You'll get now or I'll take a whip to you. Father, there's a customer. He can wait. Won't have any young whippersnapper like this defying me. Mr. Wells, I got a ranch and cash in the bank over to Leadville. I ain't a drinking man or a gunfighter, neither. I can't see why you No don't want... daughter of mine will marry a Westerner. But you ain't... I know your breed. You're ruffians. Nothing but ruffians, the whole lot of you. That ain't so. When I founded this town, I said no one living here would have anything to do with your kind. Father, can't you be reasonable? I am reasonable. 
I'm saving you from a foolish mistake. Well, you might as well know right now that I ain't giving Rita up. Do you see this whip? What do you aim to do with that? I said I'd take a whip to you if you didn't you leave. You better leave, Clerk. There ain't a man alive can drive me out of any place. No? Well, I'll show you. That was just a warning. Next time I'll be across your back. Why, you... I warned you. I'll fix you for that. And here's another. I know you don't. Let go my arm. Not until you drop that whip. Get back, stranger. Drop that whip. Drop it. I can handle my own fights. There isn't going to be a fight. Get out, Cliff. I'll do no such thing. Susie says, Cliff. Don't you understand the trouble you've made for me already? But I tell you, I'm not the one that's punished for what's happened, not you. Go on, Cliff. I'll go. But it won't be you that's making me go, Mr. Wells. If I ever see you near my daughter again, I'll horsewhip you within an inch of your life. I'm sorry about the way things had to turn out, Rita. So am I, Cliff. So long. But I'll be seeing you. Goodbye. All right. You can have your whip back, Zeb. Confound you. What right do you have to end up here? You a friend of his? I'm a friend of all Westerners. Yeah, just as I thought. You can get out of here, too. I came here to talk to you. I hope to persuade you that the course you're following is wrong. I thunder. I... What's that? Just cowboys letting off steam, Zeb. They're shooting off guns in town. I won't stand for it. There's no harm in it. It's just the custom. Where's the marshal? Why did he take their guns away? I'll see to this. Out of my way, Christian. Him plenty man. I, I apologize for the way Father talked. He isn't always this way. Really, he isn't. But, Cliff... I know. Was there something you wanted? Only to talk to your father. But well, I'm afraid that's hopeless. Yes. He won't listen to anybody. Come, Tonda. Uh, Come back later. He may be more reasonable then. Thank you. What did you learn, Kimosabe? How to hear him talk, Dolphin Monty? Uh-huh. What did they say? Me learn... There are plenty other fella with them. They have a gang? Mm, that right. I wonder where the rest of the gang is. Maybe we trail them, Dolph. Huh? That's a good idea. Steady, Silver. Then yeah. leave town only short time. We'll see if we can pick up the trail. They must have something planned if they're here with a gang. Uh, and I'm afraid it won't do any good to talk with Zeb now. Why, that? I'll tell you about it later, Tonto. But now we're in a hurry. Come on, Get Silver. Get him up, white fella. The two outlaws, Goff Layton and Monty Megan, were careful to avoid the regular trails when they left Wellsville. They headed straight for the hills and a dense forest. We see them now as they enter the clearing where their gang is camped. Hi there, Link. Hello, fellas. What'd you find out? <laughs> oh, plenty. This is going to be just about the easiest stunt we ever done. Yeah. Monty's right. That blame fool Zeb Wells couldn't have fixed things better for us. Well, that's why I said it might be a good notion coming here. And it was the best notion you ever had, Link. I'm telling you, there ain't nobody in town even carries a gun except in the town marshal. Oh. <laughs> that's a good one. Uh-huh. What's more, when some cowboys come riding into town from off the range, firing their guns and whooping it up, you'd have thought everybody in town would go loco. Huh? Even old Zeb himself beat it out of his store to stop him. Zeb did that. Weren't only him. The blacksmith, the hotel clerk, the fellow in the feed store, the whole bunch of them come running to give the marshal a hand. Well, I'll be doggone. And it was just that that gave us our scheme. Yeah. You tell him about it, Dolph. It was your ID. How would you fellas like to be cowboys for maybe an hour or so? Go ahead, Dolph. Well, it's like this. When I seen how all the folks in town rushed to help the marshal when them cowboys rode in, I figured you fellas could do the same thing. How do you mean? I suppose you know all the cash in town is mostly kept in Zeb Wells' safe. Yeah, well, that's because they ain't got no bank yet. Uh-huh. Well, if you fellas rode into town firing your guns in the air, making a plenty noise, that'd give me and Monty a chance of that safe while nobody was around. My golly, that ain't a bad idea. Zeb would be out of his store like a flash as soon as he heard the commotion. And Dolph and me'd be right there to open the safe with blasting powder. But that'd be heard. Not if you fellas made enough noise. Uh, just a second. If there ain't none of them carrying guns but the marshal, why can't we just ride into town and help ourselves without trying to fool them? Yeah. Sure, we could do that. Then it'll be known who was the outlaws. This way, there won't be no one to see us. 
And there ain't no way for it to be proved you was working with us. I reckon you are right at that. All you fellas got to do is make a commotion. Do you see us riding out of town? <laughs> and when we meet you in camp, there'll be cash enough for all of us. And all because old Zeb is too darn stubborn to savvy what's good for him. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue the story, Zeb Wells brought a group of Easterners to the West and founded the community of Wellsville. But he stubbornly refused to adopt Western customs or make Western friends. And a group of outlaws, led by Dolph Layton and Monty Meegan, planned to take advantage of this. In the meantime, the Lone Ranger had been following their trail closely. As our second act opens, early the following day, we see the Lone Ranger and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, riding toward the ranch of Cliff Dolan a friend of Zeb's daughter, Rita. I hope we find Cliff at his ranch, Tonto. Ah, we know the outlaws plan to enter town this afternoon, but we need help to trap them. Tonto, think Cliff help us. If we'd had more time, I would have told Zeb what we heard when we trailed the outlaws to their camp. Uh, him not believe you. I was afraid he wouldn't. And then that much time would have been wasted. Ah. And there was something else. What that? Zeb hates all Westerners. Uh, Tonto know that. He needs something to show him that he's been mistaken. Uh, Most of the people in town would like to live on good terms with their Western neighbors. But they feel they must obey Zeb. That right. So all we have to do is show Zeb that he's wrong. And the situation will be cleared up. You got plan? I have. But it depends on Cliff. There, his ranch. And I think that's Cliff sitting on a horse next to the corral. Oh. Uh, him see us. Yes, he's riding this way. He won't recognize me with his mask on. When I met him yesterday, I was disguised. Hi there. I want to speak to you, Cliff. What in blazes? Your mask. Whoa. Oh, 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 that's oh, a move, oh, white oh, oh. An outlaw. Well, I'll shoot you. You not shoot him. Give me back my gun. You snatch it right out of my holster. Don't keep him run. Give you later. Blast you, I want you to... You get your gun back, Cliff. But I tell you... Right you can... now, I want your help. What help could I give you? You're in love with Rita Wells? What if I am? I happen to know that outlaws are planning to rob her father. What's that? Tonto and I trailed them to their camp and overheard their plans. That's a darn funny thing for an hombre like you to be telling me. If I were an outlaw, I'd say nothing about it. Yeah, there's something to that. I have a way to capture the outlaws and show Zeb that he was wrong. You mean it might fix it so he wouldn't object to me and Rita keeping company? I do. I don't know. Everything depends on your willingness to help. By golly, I'll do it. Anyhow, I'll listen to what you have to say. And if it makes sense, then I'm with you. Good. Now this is what we'll have to do. Outlaws had completed their plans for the raid upon Wellsville. We see them now, their horses saddled and their guns loaded, as they discuss the final details. I reckon you fellas have got most everything straight now. Yeah, How soon going. do you want us fellas to follow you into town, Dolph? Just give me and Monty five or ten minutes. Then come riding in as noisy as you can. Yeah. Right. Just a second, Dolph. How about blasting powder for the safe? I was forgetting about that. <laughs> I weren't. But I don't see none. Just keep your shirt on, Monty. Old Zeb is going to give us the powder for blowing up his own safe. Huh? <laughs> Why should we carry any? We have to give our guns to the marshal. And if he sees us carrying blasting powder into town, he's liable to suspicion something. Yeah, I know, but, but Zeb's I... Zeb's got some in his store. We'll buy it from him. 
Then when he's out, we'll just take back our own cash with the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to hail it to you, Dolph. Ain't you taking extra guns with you? Sure. Got them hidden inside our shirts. We'll give our gun belts to the marshal, and he won't never think of looking for more shooting irons. And most likely we won't need them if everything goes off all right. Uh -huh. The main thing is, make all the commotion you can. You just leave that to me and the boys. Set one of the fellows to watch the general store. If he sees any trouble, the rest of you can come and help us out. Yeah. But if he sees us come out and get on our horses, he can give you the high sign and you can all light out and get away. I won't forget. You got our horses there, Marty? Yeah. All right. Let's get going. <laughs> we'll be seeing you, fellas. You're darn right you will. Get up there. Come on. Get up there. Come on. Get up there. Get up there. Get up there. Get up there. Let us flash ahead to Zeb Wells' general store in town. The old man, still bitter toward Cliff Dolan, is speaking with his daughter, Rita. You haven't seen anything of young Dolan since yesterday, have you? No, Father. Yeah, you'd better not. Father, can't you realize how wrong you are? Cliff is one of the nicest men I've ever met. They're all the same. Oh, haven't I unfair. seen them gambling, drinking, gunfighting? I won't have a daughter of mine associating with them. I, I suppose there's no use trying to argue with you. None at all. Oh, there's the marshal. Howdy, Mr. Wells. Hello, marshal. Hmm. Quiet in town today. Yep. Just took some guns off a couple of strangers. They didn't make no trouble. Strangers? Well, not exactly. They was in town yesterday, but I never seen them before that. Hmm. I got some cash here. Reckon uh, you could put it in your safe for me? Be glad to. Here it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Close to $40 there. Mm -hmm. You're saving your money. <laughs> Shucks. There ain't nothing else to do with it down. I'll put it away for you now. The safe's open. Mmm. You got a sight of cash there. Close to 10000 One be long before we'll be needing a bank here. Not by the looks of it. There. It's all locked up good. Well, there's the strangers now I was speaking of. They're coming up the steps. Uh, I see them. Uh, good afternoon. Howdy. You got some blasting powder here, mister? Why, of course. What we want is blasting powder, fuse, and caps. Yes, I can sell them to you all right. Blasting out some trees, are you? <laughs> nope. We're using it to get gold. Oh, you're miners. <laughs> you might call us that. Yeah, it's right over here. I'll get it and... Uh... Blasted, Mr. Wells. More cowboys? It sure sounds like it. Sounds like there's plenty of them. Most noise I've heard yet in town. Well, don't stand there, Marshal. Do something. Stop them. I'm a going to. You may need help. I'll go along with you. Father, you were waiting on these men. You can wait on them. Oh, I'm sorry. What was it you wanted? Just stand there. That's all we want. The first move you make, we're liable to shoot you. <gasps> all right, Money. Get going. I forgot about the girl here. That ain't going to make no difference. Just get the blasting powder ready and we'll blow up that safe. In the town's main street, a band of mounted men were whooping and firing their guns in the manner common to cowboys celebrating their arrival in town. Besides, the townspeople, aroused by the shooting, ran to aid the town marshal. The flame fools! What do they think they're doing? Hold on there! Stop that racket! Stop in the name of the law! Stop it, I tell you! Lay down old guns or you're going to jail! Back in the store, Dolph and Monty wasted no time. They prepared the blasting powder, lit the fuse, then stood back, waiting for the explosion. It'll blow up in just a second, Dolph. You, you crook! Shut up. 
Watch it. The door's blown clean off. Now to get the cash. You can't get away with it. You just think we can't. Come on, Dolph. Curly, I've never seen so much gold and silver before. It fell all over the floor. Pick it up. We gotta hurry. I'll call the marshal. Get him, honey. Hey, you. Let go. We warned you. Get your hands off me. Tie her up, honey. That's what I'm gonna do to blame Wildcat. You coward. Let go. What the hell? What? There's a dozen of them. And we caught you robbing the store, you low-down coyote. Put up your hands. You ain't gonna get me up. No. My hands. All right, Marty. Up with your hands or I'll shoot your gun away. All right. There's my gun. And I'm raising my hands. Don't shoot me. What's going on here? Father. Zeb, these outlaws blew open your safe and were stealing your cash. Oh, oh, what's that? But with Cliff's help, they were captured. Marty, where's our fellas? Why don't they come to help us out? They're all prisoners, Dolph. But we've got we to... made them prisoners just as soon as you left camp this afternoon. But who was doing all the shooting outside just now? <laughs> that was my fellas from the ranch. We caught your gang, then headed for town and hooked it up so as you'd go ahead with your scheme. We had to do it that way. If you hadn't blown the safe, there would have been nothing against you. Hold on. Let me get this straight. Then this was all your own fault. These men would never have tried a trick like this if they had thought they were going against armed men. But I, I, I They never would have been captured if Cliff and his men, the same Westerners you have misjudged, hadn't come to your help. They, they saved me close to $10,000. If it had been taken, I'd have had to pay it back. You would. Every penny of it. <laughs> it would have ruined me. I hope that now you'll believe they're friends. After the way I've talked, I'm not so sure they want to be my friends. Shucks, Mr. Wells. Everybody makes mistakes. I'm willing to let bygones be bygones. Thank you. But how'd you know this was going to happen? How'd you find out about these crooks? It was the mask fell on Tonto that done that. They trailed him to their camp and heard what they was planning. But why wasn't I told? <laughs> The mask fella figured you might be sore at him after his taking that whip away from you. Is that the same man? I'm sure it is. He talked me into taking the fellas that worked for me and capturing the other crooks when these two left for town. The rest of the gang planned to do just what we done, come yelling and shooting. And without guns, we could have done nothing. The mask fella was sure enough right about that. I think I've been wrong about a number of things. But I've had my eyes opened at last. You have. And it was the mask fella that done it. Oh! The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>